I'm Tisha Bader. Thank you for joining us as we continue our coverage of the situation in Israel following the Hamas massacre of October the 7th. With the deployment of IDF soldiers and call-up reservists across the country as Israel battles terror group Hamas in Gaza, Israelis living abroad have also been flying back to Israel to serve, but not without challenges. Well, a new initiative, the Israel Reservist Fund, is trying to ease that process, help get these reservists home to Israel to help defend the country. This project was created by Israeli actress Swell Ariel Orr, who you may know from her leading role in the Netflix series, The Beauty Queen of Jerusalem together with TV writer and producer Leslie Shapira to support IDF soldiers in the war with Hamas. And Swell joins us now from Los Angeles to talk about this initiative. Swell, thank you so much for being here in this truly, truly difficult time. Thank you for having us. Um, it's really important to speak up wherever you can and whenever you can. Absolutely. So first and foremost, please accept our deepest condolences for the unfathomable loss of life from the Hamas brutal slaughter on October the 7th and our best wishes and, and hopes for a swift return of all those who are being held hostage in Gaza. Amen. Can you talk about where you were, how you found out about what happened on October the 7th? Um, yes, it was Friday night here. And I was on my way back from Toronto. I had a public speaking event there. And the moment I landed, I got texts from my mom and my friends. There are rockets in Tel Aviv. And I thought, you know, it's terrible to say, but it happens once a year, at least. So I thought it's just going to be as we know. And then I'm getting more and more notifications about um, terrorists cross the borders and I realize it's something that we've never experienced before and I have PTSD from a terror attack that I was in when I was 16. Oh my goodness. It was, <clears throat> yeah and it was really triggering for me and I obviously I started to panic and to cry and I remember I, I, I yelled at the airplane terrorists are attacking my country and except of like two people, very nice people, it seemed like no one cared. And from that moment till now, it feels like one long nightmare. And at the same time, every day feels like a month. So, yeah. I'm so sorry, first of all, that you've experienced this so personally and closely. And I, I cannot imagine. I know this is a reality that sadly many in israel have experienced as you have and then what happened just um days ago the hamas attack was was something on a scale that no one could possibly imagine it is it's so shocking from here i know it's so shocking i can't imagine how people in israel are dealing with it we're, we're speaking to people there or to for you your close family is there it is just and it almost doesn't matter because the people of Israel are our family. If people ask me, like, do you know anyone there? Do you have family there? I, of course, you are brothers and sisters, um, and we we are with you one thousand percent. And also, it's our home. It's the only country that, God forbid, if something will happen to you in your hometown, you can feel safe to go there as a Jew. That's right. That's right. And and this is what the IDF is now fighting for. This is what most of Israelis, uh, men, certainly between the ages of 18 and, and 40, I believe it is, can get called up for Miluim for reserve. They're on the front lines right now fighting for that very thing that you just said, to maintain the safety of the state of Israel, that it, it'll be a home for the Jewish people. And it, it's an unbelievable thing that we're living through. Talk about how this idea came up for you and, and sort of what was the beginning and, and where things stand now with this um, really wonderful initiative. Um, I served in the IDF and luckily um, I haven't experienced something like that while I served there, but I know that it's very, very important to have your morale up, especially now, because you 
it's very easy, not easy, but it's very, things are hard. It's, it's a terrible reality and it can bring your spirit down. It can break your soul, but we have to have our soldiers very, very strong and to have their morale up. And at the first days of the war, I felt so helpless. It's the first time I'm experiencing something like that far away from my family. I, I, I moved here three weeks ago and I felt so helpless and guilty and I, I didn't know what to do because there are big organizations that are trying to do whatever they can to help Israel and the, the IDF right now, but I had to do something. And I found out that there are so many soldiers and reservists in the first few days of the war who bought their own ticket. They didn't wait. They didn't want to wait um, until the government on, or the consul will take care of it. They bought their own ticket. And we're talking about soldiers who just got out of the army and are traveling in the weirdest places on earth, like in India or Colombia, like in small villages. And they did the whole journey home and they took care of everything and they left their freedom and the safety of abroad. And we're talking about reservists who left their honeymoon in the Caribbeans or in other exotic places. And I thought to myself, okay, they did this for us. We can take care of the little thing for them and to reimburse them for that of uh, flight tickets. We can help them to bring the morale up. We can show them that we take care of everything for them. That once this whole nightmare is over, hopefully very soon, they can go, they can go back and continue traveling or being free. And so I reached out to my friend, Leslie, my dearest friend, Leslie, and together we opened this fund and it was not, I didn't, when we started it, I didn't understand how big of an operation it's gonna be. We have so many soldiers that are in the waiting list right now. Like we, ha we helped 250 soldiers so far. We raised close to $200,000, but it's not enough. And every day it's growing bigger and bigger because there are so many soldiers and reservists who dropped everything at the moment that it happened to come back to protect our country. And this is why we're doing it for them. It's so important, Swell. And so just give us an idea of the people that are still waiting um, to get back to Israel. It's mostly a financial issue that is that is preventing them from getting on a plane. It's like at least a thousand dollars, I understand, or something like that to fly one way to Israel. Yeah. Um, I think that now the government and the consul are doing a better job from um, bringing re of bringing reservists back home, but from central cities. Our fund is helping soldiers all over the world, not just LA or New York or London. Um, even if it's just paying for a flight to get to LA and from LA you have uh, a free flight from the government, we're gonna reimburse that. That's wonderful. Are you able to get feedback from some of these soldiers that you've helped? What are you hearing from them? Uh, um, you know, it's hard about it. You know that you're helping them in a way, in a weird way, but at the same time, <clears throat> you're talking to the soldiers themselves and you know that you're sending them to the front line. And luckily I have a whole team in Tel Aviv that are talking to them because they're in the same time zone. Um, so we are, one of our philosophies is to really give them t like the whole net of like, it's not just people from here. We have a whole team in Tel Aviv that is available for you guys 24 seven, we are too. And just talking to them, they are the sweetest, most humble and full of light and passion to protect your country. And you're trying to give them good energies and bring their morale up and telling them like, we're gonna take care of the fact that it, when this terrible nightmare is over, you'll have the ability to go back. But you know that you're sending them to the front line at the same time and it's like, and you're trying not to think about it or to talk about it with them because it's it's not gonna do any good but it's it's weird it's very i i can only imagine it's it's such a complex situation but 
you just have to view it that you are helping them do what they are yeah, determined and, and to do. Definitely. And this is why my heart breaks right now that we have 150 soldiers on a waiting list because I don't want to be in a position of saying no to any of them. This is why we are continuing to raise money. And I'm, I'm sure we're going to get there and we're going to reimburse all those soldiers because I'm not going to say no to any of them. It's, it's really a beautiful idea as well. And I think also you were talking about feeling helpless and so many of us feel that way. And I think it's so important to find something that you can do, something, some action you can physically take or make the phone call or make the donation or, you know, gather volunteers, what have you, to at least feel like you are doing something in the face of this shocking reality. I mean... I've never felt so helpless. And I know that so many of you guys here in the United States or all over the world feels the same. And I, I personally know what it's like to be a soldier, but a lot of you guys don't know and you can't even imagine, but you have a lot of things to do and you are doing. And I want to encourage you to do more, to donate, to talk to the people that are in Israel now, to support wherever you can to speak up on socials do whatever you can but also to take care of our soldiers it's the most important thing we have absolutely. we have to have them strong and to have their morale up absolutely it's critical swell you mentioned social media and i'm sure you know there are a lot of people out there that are spewing a lot of hate a lot of anti-israel sentiment um i'm just wondering as someone, you are an actress, you're an artist, you are in the spotlight, how you are dealing with that, coping with that, or are you just sort of ignoring it for now because you have more important things to do? Honestly, I don't care about that anymore. Um, I care about um, sharing the truth in an accessible way that will um, create an impact and I have a team that's helping me with what messages um, should I put on my socials. And at the beginning, it was, I was shocked from all the comments and DMs that I got. And I was really obsessed about it. Like I, I was shocked about the, about, um, there was so much hate um, and so much misunderstanding and people that, are saying that October 7th didn't happen. Like it reached to that level and it's crazy to me. And I realize it's just a waste of my energy. I have so much things I can, so many things I can do. I'm speaking in events to help raising money to our fund, to other things. Um, I'm speaking on socials. I'm fighting. I'm not going to waste my time on those you know what's the thing? It's not even just like Hamas robots. It's like legit people. Oh, yeah. Well-educated people. I know. That's what's really scary. Yeah. But I'm focusing on the small piece of the puzzle, which is our fund to reimburse the tickets and to bring their morale up. Another piece of the puzzle to speaking up and to encourage all of my friends, Jewish, non-Jewish friends to speak up and to support my family and friends that my family and friends are all in Israel now. Most of my friends are on the front lines. Um, I'm not going to waste my time on people who hate us. You're absolutely right, Swell. And I hope you know and how much we are with you. As I said earlier, it bears repeating that you're in our hearts Everyone who's serving right now, everyone who's waiting at home for information about their loved ones, everyone who tragically is mourning their loved ones, we are with you. We are thinking of you. We will continue to help as we can and just send the warmest embrace to the people of Israel. And good for you. Good for you for finding something to do that is critically important. You are helping these soldiers get home and doing what they need to do and you're taking action and focusing on, as you said, what really is important. So thank you so much. And I thank hope- Thank you. And of, thank you. Of course. And, you know, I wish this was an interview where we could talk about your show, which is so wonderful and your work, which is so wonderful. 
I really hope for better next days time. ahead. Yes, yes. Next, next time, time when for things now, are the better. Best thing um, all of you who are watching us right now can do is to go to my Instagram and the link to the fund is in my bio and donate and spread it. Swell. Thank you so much. And you. truly, truly, um, just hoping for good days ahead. Am Yisrael Chai. Am Yisrael Chai. Velo mefached. Velo mefached. Stay strong. You too. Thank you. Swell Ariel Orr speaking to us from Los Angeles. She has a wonderful initiative to help reservists abroad, anywhere in the world, get back to Israel to serve and protect the country. Thank you so much, Swell. Thank you. Thank you.